Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I want to present to you today um, a paper that I found in PNAS about the influence from cnidarians on coral reefs, hosts that can attract the symbiotic algae that these uh, corals need for, for, for growing and for living in throughout their lives. This is a paper from a, ja a Japan group, and I really like it because it is simple experimental setup, kind of simple, uh, but that really show and, and made a, a pretty good case about their biological mechanism that we were trying to study. These coral reefs that they, st they study in this paper, they need a type of algae that lives with them in symbiosis uh, to provide mostly energy. But the mechanism that um, how the algae get along with the coral reef was not really well understood. So there, is, there was still a doubt about if the coral was producing some type of chemical that would attract the cells, the, the algae cells, or if there were some other mechanisms, for example, phototaxis. Uh, and the paper was is trying to prove that the coral actually is using phototaxis to lure these algae cells towards the coral reef, uh, expressing fluorescent proteins. Uh, for this case, uh, a green fluorescent protein inside the cell. So for, to show that they were able to do this, uh, they developed some, some types of experimental setups. So the first thing that they tried was to establish for which wavelengths the cells, the, the algae cells that they, the coral reefs need to use, uh, to which wavelength they, are, they have phototaxis toward to. So basically what they did here was uh, they created a uh, plastic vessel where they have a light source on one side and a black screen on the other side just to prevent reflections uh, on this side. And they put algae cells on this um, plate and waited for some minutes. And then they added a silicon uh, barrier in the middle and then took all the cells from this side, all the cells from this side and quantified the amount of cells from this and this. So if you are in this size, you have phototaxis toward the light. And if you're in this size, you have um, phototaxis away from the light, negative phototaxis. And they use this two uh, cell number here to generate a phototaxis index, which is basically the number of cells here minus the number of cells here, divided by the total of cells so uh, the total of cells. So if you have a positive value, it means you have more cells here. If you have a negative value, it means you have more cells here. And they plotted, um, they did this experiment for several wavelengths um, in the visible spectrum. Uh, and they observed that the cells have a phototaxis towards the blue, um, UV, blue, red, violet, region, blue region, and green region. In the yellow and orange region, they don't have, they almost have, have no phototaxis. And in the red region, they also have phototaxis. These peak regions, these uh, more intense regions, they are, they are reasonable because the pigments for photosynthesis and for phototaxis usually absorbs in these regions here. Uh, lacking in this area here of the spectrum. Um, they tried several uh, strategies for culturing the cells before the, the experiment, uh, exposing the cells to several hours of, and different hours of light before this experiment here. And they see that around two and four, they have the highest uh, signal in four hours. So they standardized all their experiments to be done in these conditions here. Then to show that the, that the, photo, the cells, the, the coral reef was doing phototaxis, uh, they chose one coral reef that express a fluorescent protein, that is a green fluorescent protein that has this spectra here, that is excited on the blue region and the UV region, 
and emits a light on the green region of the spectrum. So basically what they did was they took a piece of this coral here and they put it inside a plastic vessel uh, with a light source from top. And these, they took it from a live coral reef and a, and a sec, a dead one, a skeleton. And they put these pieces of uh, coral reefs inside a small plastic bag to avoid any chemical compounds to be uh, emitted from these uh, from these structures here and therefore only light could go out from here and they did the experiment where they exposed the dead cell the dead coral reef and the live one to blue light and they observe in they observed that the cells the algae cells after some minutes they accumulate around the coral reef the live coral reef and they tested different colors to show that um, is really the fluorescence that is probably happening here and that is attracting the algae cells. So they use blue, a blue LED that excites the, uh, the glowing fluorescent protein. And you can see that for the control, you almost have no uh, phototaxis. And for the live one, you have phototaxis. Uh, in green light, you have um, almost no difference between the two conditions, the dead and the live one. In red, it's the same, and in dark, is the same, meaning there are no difference between the two conditions. Uh, to further show that it is... Um, to, to show the effect, they prepare a video where they put the cells in, this, in the same setup from the previous graphs, where you have cells swimming in this media, you have a dead coral reef, a live coral reef, and you can see that in, when exposed to blue light, the cells swim and accumulate around the live uh, coral reef uh, after the experiment, uh, as you can see here. Cool, and to further show that it is light that is inducing the cells to, to go towards a certain point in the assay. What they did was they prepare um, a, 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 a material that was, one was painted with a, a white uh, paint and the other one with a green fluorescent dye uh, that emits light in a, in a spectra similar uh, to the green fluorescent protein, meaning that when exposed to blue light, it emits, emits a green light. And if it is really phototaxis that is happening, that is accumulating the cells, we would expect to see an accumulation of the algae cells through this artificial structure, even though it's not the live um, coral reef. And this is indeed what happened. happened. So for the control, you can see that there is no phototaxis or no accumulation of cells around the structure. But for the one that was painted with the green fluorescent uh, dye, you can see that the cells accumulate around this material after 10 minutes exposure in blue light. Uh, and it, they did a similar experiment with the, uh, uh, as before from the coral reef. And you can see that the, the known uh, painted one compared to the painted one has a signif significant more uh, algae cells around er using three micromoles per, per square meter per second uh, uh, in this assay for 20 and for 60 uh, micromoles of photons. And in the green region, we almost don't, we don't see difference between them. The same for the red and the same for the dark as before for the live and dead and that uh, coral reef. Uh, and for the sunlight, which is, is the condition that we see in nature, we see that at some level of light, it's possible to observe uh, the phototaxis of the cells towards the, these, uh, these green fluorescent dye um, apparatus. Um, Cool. Uh, and then for showing that 
the same effect happened with this uh, painted uh, structure. They did the same experiment where they put the cells in media with the green fluorescence dyed um, structure here and the control here. And after some minutes, uh, you can we can see that there is accumulation of the algae cells around the structure that is painted with the green fluorescent dye. Uh, to further prove that this uh, was really happening, it would happen in nature as well. What they did was they prepared some traps for the for these algae cells, which is a synthetic trap, where they painted one with the green fluorescent dye and the other one with just white white paint, and they put nine of these uh, structures uh, on the sea at different uh, uh, sea, uh, seabed height uh, depths, so from four to eight meters deep. Uh, and after some hours they collected these traps and then extracted all the cells from here and counted how many of this, these algae cells they have it inside of each trap the green fluorescent one and then the white one. And they observe a 2.5 fold increase uh, in the number of algae cells in the, G, in the green fluorescent dyed trap relatively to the one that was, didn't have this green fluorescent dye. Um, and with this, they discussed that these results uh, makes a pretty strong case that uh, the, these coral reefs evolved the production of green fluorescent proteins for helping them to trap and to acquire the symbiotic algae cells that they needed to survive. Um, and there are some discussions saying that the early coral reefs, or the, the really the newborn cells, they express more of this glyphron sundial than the older one. And it makes sense because it's, they need to capture or receive the symbionts uh, and keep them with them so they are able to be alive afterwards. So it makes sense that they express more of the green person protein to attract more this cells. Um, this presentation you can find in the description of this video and also the link for the article that if you want to read. And there are some supplementary material that can be used and there's a better description of the methods they use for doing all these experiments if you have interest.